their garlic, pesto, pasta and meatballs. Today we are going to prepare garlic scape pesto. This is our garlic plants. These are our garlic, garlic plants that we planted early November, mid-November. Now it's summertime, it grew tall. We hope it will be big and nice garlic bulbs. Now at this time of the year, it's June, and garlic shoots out garlic scapes. You can see one here. It has a little ball. Garlic scape. They're beautiful when they start to curl. We have to take them, snip them. Like you see, we already snipped almost all of them. And here's a here how much we harvested from our garlic. Here another one, but we still have it. You can see they're nice and elegant. This is a bulb that has that will have. If you leave it like this, it will grow into a little seeds. But in order to, in order to have all energy go into the bulb itself, that's why we have to take them. And like this, it snaps very easy. It tastes very good, it's very garlicky, and you can chop it up into salad. Smells like real garlic. Or we can hear how much we collected so far. That's most, most of what we collected from our garden. And we're going to make garlic pesto. You can chop it up in the salad. But this time we're going to make garlic paste. We also have, we're going to add to this our dill. This year we have very beautiful dill. Here, how tall it grew. Big, huge dill plants. Whole, whole forest of them. Here, this is a. This is going to be a cucumber plant, and this is how how tall. How tall is dill? Very beautiful. We're going to add it. We're going to collect. To harvest a lot of dill, and put it in our garlic scape pesto. Here I see a couple more that we're going to I'm going to snap them right now. Just with the fingernail. It has mellow taste. It's garlicky but it's still very mild and juicy ends. The tops we're probably going to disregard. So here's our harvest, it's a lot, but after we trim and cut it, we will show what we do next. Next thing we're going to give our scapes a soak, just for a couple minutes to remove dust and dirt. And we will do it in a couple batches because we have a lot of them. Next we're going to put them 
in a colander that water can just get get off the water. We can change and get another piece. We give a little salt. Another bit since we have a lot of them. We are soaking it for a couple reasons, not just rinse. When soaking, it takes a little time. We are soaking it instead of just rinsing it. Because when you soak, the dirt will remove, will get removed for a couple minutes, one, two minutes. And now back to the calendar and next step we're going to, to start chopping off these parts that are a little woody and not that tasty. However, you still can use them. But we're going to remove them and we're going to chop up whole batch of it. Next step, we're going to soak and wash our escapes because some dirt builds up and we're not rinsing it rather than soaking and washing for about a minute because that way the dirt will get removed for all pieces because when you rinse it's not always working that good so after rinsing after washing for a minute or so we're going to put it in a calendar that water can drip off. We don't have excess of water. Next step, we're going to chop off these little, little buds that are a little woody and it's probably going... We can use it too, if you want, but... We're not going to use it, this part. It will be smoother and nicer. I think it will taste better. We will use, in pesto we will use dill. Because I have a lot of dill growing, so I'm going to harvest now a lot of bunches of dill and I believe even stems stems of dill maybe we will use because they are young and crunchy we will see it's in process since I have to make room for my this little plant is a cucumber going to be. And here another one. So I'm harvesting a bunch of dill. I harvested a bunch of dill to put in pesto. Some people prefer basil, but first of all I don't have basil. And second of all, I think I will try dill. It will have a better taste. I hope so. So we will see to find out. I will use most of the stems, but if some dill stems are a little hard, so I'm going to cut them off. And we're going to soak for a little while, also to get dirt or little other stuff off. So I have here a good bunch of dill. I would say that's exact bunch that you can just buy 
in the shop, in the store. That would be the same size. After it will get chopped up, I will let you know how many cups are there. But that is about a bunch that you can buy. And we're going also to soak it in cold water. Soak and wash. Also in around a minute. Let all dirt to get off. And we'll put it also in the calendar. Now that water can drip off nicely. I'm giving a second wash to a deal. I change the water and another wash, soak and wash. About half a minute. Because believe it or not, it was a lot of debris on the bottom of, of our container. So now I think it washed and cleaned good. And it's going finally to calendar to get excess water off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to get most of the water out. And here, second rinse, you still can find some stuff. But it's okay. It is all good now. Now we are in process to remove these little heads. We have already removed part of them and chopped them up. So here, removing the heads in one container. And now we're going to chop up in pretty much big pieces. First thing we're going to remove these heads. We might be going to use them later. Now we're going to chop up our the rest. And it doesn't matter about inch or two inch pieces. We're going to line up them. Nice and even. Even. Chop off the heads. Chop into half. And about inch or two. My husband found another method to remove and he likes it because it's maybe the same speed as we were lining up these escapes. It may take the same time. So chop off the head and chop the rest with the scissors. Regular or garden or scissors is pretty sharp so he finds it faster and easier to do so 
so we are in process we have uh, some way to go when we will finish all chopping up we will measure it to figure out how many cups we have this is our deal washed excess water removed dropped off and I'm going to remove these thick pieces stems because this year it grew very good because we had a lot of rain and it became very very hard so the thick only thick pieces we're going to remove and we're going to chop up garlic chop up dill this is our bunch of dill we're going to chop it coarse since we're going to put it still in the blender along with our escapes and coarse chop so crunchy and fresh you can hear it when you cut it from our and garden yes fresh from our garden oh it smells so good it's still we hope that our pesto will taste and smell amazing so we're going to measure like I said it is a bunch that you probably can buy in the store the whole bunch because we have this is all our scapes this container contains big green container contains eight cups so we have eight cups of scapes and we're going to measure it probably around two cups chopped dill here this is a half cup measuring cup so yeah it's about one and a half or two the pesto is very forgiving the pesto is very forgiving so it doesn't have to be like perfect measurements So our next step would be, we will see all ingredients that we're going to put in. Now we're going to take a lemon, whole lemon, and we're going to squeeze it and to get more, it will be more juice out of the lemon if we do it this way. So we're going to use our juice here. I'm going to use a whole lemon because we have a lot of scapes and and dill, and also we're going to use a cup of we're going to use a cup of walnuts to add texture and here is a cup of walnuts and olive oil that's the main ingredient you can add some salt but we're not going to use salt Oh. 
So we have 8 cups of garlic scapes chopped up. We have one and a half cup or whole bunch of dill that we harvested from our garden. We're going to use a cup of walnuts. We're going to use lemon juice from whole lemon. Also we're going to use a little more than half avocado to get more creaminess and use this way we can use less oil. We're going to use extra virgin olive oil and to substitute with avocado so we can use less oil. Okay, we turn the blender on. We chopped some, pulls and chopped, and now we're going to add olive oil, half cup. Now we're going to add more scapes. We have so many of them that maybe we will have to do it in two, in two batches. We will see how it unfolds. Pulse, pulse. to open, scrape the sides. And add some more oil. We are scraping off the sides. I'm going to add more scapes. To add more scapes, and pulse it again. Pulse it a couple of times and pulse. Pulse again. It is good. Now scrape again. Scrape the sides again. It's a process and we're going to use another half of cup of olive oil. And our lemon juice, let's see, let's see how much we have from one lemon. Intentionally, I let the pulp, I just took out the seeds and I left the pulp of the lemon. Okay, and we're going to slowly add another half cup of olive oil. Slowly. Okay, now we're going to add more scapes. And pulse it again. It's already... Texture already coming. 
and after that we're going to put our seeds okay we put the rest we put the rest of our scapes in in the food processor and we already added oil and lemon juice the second half of a cup now we're going to pulse it again scrape it and after that we're going to here we go we're going to pulse again and scrape a couple more times Now we're going to scrape and turn again. I would say it was a little too much scapes. We probably should have used it. Do it in two batches. But maybe we will work it out. Scraping again and we will close it again. And maybe we can add some more oil because we will have to have anyway. Let's let's put another half cup. In there. So we're going to add another half cup of oil since we have a lot of scapes. Going to add and pull, add and pull. like it's working good we have to scrape I'm going to scrape it again let's see how it looks like it's almost all chopped most of it since we had eight cups of scapes that's why it's a little tough. We should have do it in two batches. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're going to add we now. Not. We're going to scrape it again. We're going to add dill and our avocado. We're going to add half, half or all. We're going to add half, pulse and add the rest. Half avocado, maybe. Oh, so. chop it up. And a couple pieces. Okay. Half avocado, half dill, and pulse again. It coming together. to scrape it again it's coming together We also have walnuts, 
that we will start adding now, little by little. Here we go. Ну что ты говоришь мне, что ты? It is coming along nicely. We now added all of our ingredients. We added more walnuts, more avocado, our dill, and we added half, another half of olive oil. So now we have two, two cups of olive oil. Scraped it and we're going to pulse it again. We're going to scrape it again. It's coming nicely, but it will, we will have to do it a couple more times. It's already a lot creamier. Smells very good. I'm sure it tastes good. We have to pulse and scrape, pulse and scrape and mix it until we get to the right consistency. Couple more tries. coming together nicely. Now we have to scrape it and mix it again. And a couple more times it will be all done. I would say with four cups of escapes or less it would go a little faster and easier but it's coming together, it's all good. We will try a couple more times. And we will be all set to try. We might add more lemon. This is how it looks. Okay, we're going to start pulsing again. Here we received that nice pesto consistency it's smooth nice smells good tastes very good 
Avocado I added a lot of creaminess and olive oil. And we also added just maybe a teaspoon of salt to get the flavor. So very nice pesto. You can use it on toast. You can use it in pasta. Very nice flavor. So you should try it and you can also leave your comments what you would suggest. Uh, basil or oregano would add maybe a different flavor to this. Always try new things. Here is our pesto, garlic scape pesto. You can truly feel the garlic scapes. And since we didn't add any other herbs except dill, it's the garlic pesto escape taste feels very good and you can actually feel not overpowered by other herbs you can feel true garlic escape taste it's tangy like a garlic it's creamy it tastes very good and like I said not overpowering by other herbs Now our new project will be to use these I call leftovers from our garlic scapes. We will add still will add nuts and we still have left some garlic scape paste or pesto left in the blender. So we're going to leave it and we're going to add our top part of the escapes. We're also going to add mint and more dill. We just want to experience to see what is going to look like and taste like. So we're going to add some more dill and mint. We washed it, we drain it out of the water and couple pieces of lemon balm and we will see what what kind of pesto we get with other flavors here we're going to chop up coarsely this mint little lemon balm since we grow it in our garden so we're going to try it and still some beer So it's going into the blender now. Okay, it goes inside the blender where we have, like I said, leftovers from our pesto, our pure pesto from just garlic escapes with dill. Now mint and some lemongrass, and we're going to use the tops of garlic scape and some nuts. Yeah, it is very creamy, it is very nice. Mm. And yummy and soft. Very soft. Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah, if you like it, please subscribe and see you next time. Thumbs up. Also what we learned from our experience by separating the tops of the 
dill escapes of the garlic escapes and the bottom itself is that we can use all together because just the tops with olive oil another dill mint and nuts and leftovers avocado gave very creamy very good and nice texture so if you would like you can use a whole escape with a flower part with a part, part about above the flower and bottom line whole and this is our dish with our garlic pesto pasta and meatballs it looks beautiful it tastes delicious and nutritious so thumbs up and try again try and let us know what you think